Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest. Riker, the, the rumors are rumbling and a guy that has been, name has been thrown around by a lot of Raptors fans for a long time, Drew Holiday. It seems like he's finally on the block for the New Orleans Pelicans. Reports came out, said they're shopping him, they're looking for potential deals, and he's been a guy that they've sort of held on to really tightly, but... You know, with their younger core, they're they're looking for different players to go around the league, and they want to trade him to a NBA contender. Obviously, the Toronto Raptors have been one of the top teams in the NBA. And Riker, do you think this is a player we should go after right now? Considering he's a little bit older than probably the last time we made a video on him, but he he's a, he's a baller, Drew Holiday. Ben, bear with me through this this pun, this joke, but. <laughs> Yeah, this holiday trade does not make me very festive, Ben. And this guy, <laughs> he offers a lot of actually incredible things. He is a an extremely athletic, aggressive guard. I think he can really attack the basket in a way that Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet, they haven't been able to. And Kyle Lowry maybe to a lesser extent because he is able to kind of manipulate his body, especially in the last couple playoff series that we've seen. He just unlocked another another level of attacking the rim, finishing layups. But Fred Van Vliet, who is really notorious for struggling around the paint area, um, Holiday, he just doesn't seem to have those issues. But then you look at yep. maybe his playmaking, his three-point shooting, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I don't see a trade scenario that I get really excited about that I, that I want to really sink my teeth into, Ben. Well, you brought up the holiday season. I know it's November, and I want and you wanted to plug something before as we start the podcast. So I'll let you do that before we really dive into the holiday stuff. Cheers. Yeah, I'll keep it brief. Um, this year, I'm making a concerted effort to grow my mo and uh, and really take it seriously. I had my brother had cancer. A couple of friends recently in their 20s, they had cancer. All of them recovered, but it is a super serious serious issue. And uh, you know, most people that listen to this are probably in the same age. So. I'm just looking, you know, they're pretty courageous people, uh, extremely positive, and, and I'm looking to share that energy and, and raise a bit of money for a good cause. So put the link down in the bio if you guys are compelled to uh, chip in a couple dollars. I have a pretty modest fundraising goal, so I'll leave it to you guys. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Definitely great cause. Throw throw some donations towards November. But, you know, you brought up a, a lot of points on Drew Holiday there to start. You're not the the highest on this sort of trade, and it's been th there's a lot of potential scenarios going around. None of these are specifically reported. He's not linked to the Toronto Raptors just yet. It's just that the Pelicans want to trade him to a contender. It seems like every team in the league has been mentioned by fans and stuff, but a lot of people are talking about a potential sign-in trade with Fred Van Vliet, and you sort of made the comparison right there. Fred Van Vliet struggled vitally to finish inside the paint during this this year's playoffs especially with the the higher you know the defense more locked in on him being not being the unknown and not having a, a just burst out to the scene three-point shooting game so he drew holiday definitely is the better slasher better scorer but doesn't bring the sort of three-point shooting that fred does I think they're, they're arguable in terms of playmaking. Drew Holiday's averaged close to eight assists for a lot of about three or four seasons in his career. Last season had about seven. You know, Drew's also been on a team that's less, I guess we'll say, organized, less neutral. Like the Toronto Raptors, I think they'd get more out of Drew Holiday, especially with his play style. I think Fred's a phenomenal st stealer of the basketball, but Drew Holiday's looked at as one of the best on ball defenders in the league. He's a little bit bigger, he's a little bit. I just consider Drew Holiday a little bit better of a player right now. He's a couple years older. He's They're going to probably make the same amount of money after Fred Van Vliet gets paid this offseason. But, Riker, because I don't... If we're keeping Fred Van Vliet, the, that money's going to the 2021 offseason regardless. So they're both going to sort of eat up that cap space going into that year. But in the short term, I like Drew Holiday probably a little bit better. And if you could get that sign and trade, because Fred Van Vliet might fit the timeline of the Pelicans a bit more, you know... I don't mind that deal, but long term, it kind of hurts me, especially where we don't know what Fred Van Vliet's ceiling really is. My brain just absolutely unscrewed and went to a different location completely. Did you just say in the short term you prefer Drew Holiday to Fred Van Vliet? Yeah. Are you? What? Can you back that up a little bit? His, his, he's like the best on-ball defender in the league. He slashes his ability. If he could play off Kyle Lowry, he's probably better on the wings. 
I don't know. But just listen, Ben, in terms you, of- Ben, you know, we can't just, you don't qualify any argument based on their, their actual skill set. You need to put it in context of playoffs because, again, we would agree that Montrezl Harrell would be a plus to put on the team for the regular season. He would add wins, but we both agree he'd be unplayable come playoff time in particular series that are most important to probably have a backup big. So how, how is Drew Holiday an improvement over Fred Van Vliet in the playoffs? That on-ball defense. Do you do you not remember that series where the Pelicans went up against the Portland Trail? But I think you're underwriting Drew Holiday a lot, and I think he does get sort of that that flag for not being in a big market, not being a, a flashy player, and not being necessarily the the lights out three point shooter, but still a solid one shooting thirty five percent. But he absolutely clamped, in my opinion, the second best point guard in the NBA or second third best in Damian Lillard. Right, the the Pelicans ended up sweeping the higher seed at Blazers. I. And Drew Holiday was a massive part of that. He's not had an opportunity, hasn't had the roster around him to be, you know, really make any real deep runs and not play any other team besides the Warriors in the playoffs. But when he's not going up against the the super team, the the Kevin Durant led Golden State Warriors, he's been an absolute beast in the playoffs, Riker. Ben, you're telling me in the series that was the most important for the Raptors. Second most important, third most important series. So most important, obviously, Golden State winning the championship. Second most important, obviously, that Philadelphia Game 7 win. But third most important series, potentially, in Raptors history, that Boston celtics Toronto Raptors series, where they only lost by five points, only allowed 92 points against one of the most guard-centric teams in the entire NBA, most talented teams in the entire NBA in terms of pure scoring, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kemba Walker. You know, you can put Marcus Smart into a particular category of defense, and then he kind of came alive with his shooting. That that our guard defense was the reason that we lost that game? You know, only down by one, two points in the final two-minute stretch of that game seven, and, and it was guard defense that lost it? It was it was three-point shooting, Ben. It, was, it wasn't defense. Like, that series could have easily been won if the, the Raptors had to have scored in, or Pascal Siakam had to step up and shoot in the paint or if Norman Powell had to have not lost an offensive rebound off of a free throw. But there's a lot of different things that we can point at. But I'd I'd be very hard-pressed to say that putting Drew Holiday in replacement of Fred Van Vliet in that series, which we both know that that series is the most important thing that's happened in the last season for the Toronto Raptors, that that would be an improvement. Like, that would be a guaranteed win. I'm not necessarily saying in specific situations or, or whatnot, but the Toronto Raptors, Drew Holiday's not a bad three point shooter. Like he's he's not gonna be he's not gonna get he as thirty two percent and then he was twenty five percent, and that's his last two playoffs. In a couple of playoff series, but over the yeah, that's an extremely small sample size. Fred Van Vliet's had some you know, you could Fred cherry Van Vliet pick specific. In, in the most important stages of it, of the entire professional ability to play as a as a pro basketball player shot 39 and 40 percent in the playoffs yeah from specific and i'm not you know i'm conceding the point fred van vliet's certainly the better three-point shooter but you look at just all around game just at literally everything else i think drew holiday has the edge and i don't know where fred van vliet's gonna go and i'm saying just right now in terms of players where they were last season right if you just give me one player to play a pickup game right now I'd probably take Drew Holiday. That's just because he, in my opinion, he does pretty well everything else at a little bit of a higher level right now. Now, Fred Van Vliet, he's been continuously improving every season. He hasn't had the same opportunities Drew Holiday has had, but I don't know, right? Like, what what else does Fred Van Vliet sort of have over Drew Holiday to make you say it's a ridiculous argument to have to not choose Drew Holiday, who's been notoriously the best defender in terms of the the back in the backcourt, and he's guarded wings, he's guarded bigs. LeBron James even come out and said he hates being guarded by Drew Holiday, and then he can also show up on the offensive end. He's been a lead scorer for the Pelicans. I don't know how you can just write this guy off. Just last season, he averaged nineteen and seven and five rebounds. So, like, what else? What else would you say Fred has the edge on? Okay, twenty five percent three point shooting in the playoff. 32% three-point shooting in the playoffs versus 39 and 40% shooting from three in the playoffs at the highest stage. And Fred Van Vliet played that crazy front face guarding defense against Steph Curry, against one of the best teams that ever played in the entire NBA, 
We had no criticisms towards his defensive ability. He got that that one lone finals MVP vote. He's a guy that we play two six footers in our backcourt for two full seasons now, and we play them down the stretch every single game. I had never once known the Raptors to lose a game against guards scoring on us. Even Kemba Walker, who was one of the shiftiest guards in the entire NBA, that he was not the reason that the Raptors us. lost that series. What? He got some clutch buckets against us. But he was not the reason that they lost that series. They could not stop J- uh, Tatum down the stretch, Jalen Brown down the stretch. And and ultimately, it wasn't even the defense because if you keep a team like Boston Celtics who have all of that scoring ability to 92 points in a game, you should win that game. It came down to our bigs could not score in the paint and we could not convert our three-point shots. The three-point shooting is the most valuable aspect, and that's the that's the... The composition of this Raptors team, they play fast and they're able to to huck it up. And we have criticisms against um, who? Let's like I don't even know a player on the team now that's not able to shoot his threes at a at a high clip. Rondé, you know? Rondé. Yeah, and so he doesn't play come playoff time. Marc Gasol, that's a perfect example. Who's a guy whose three point shooting just completely fell off, and we really charted him as being the worst, the least valuable player on the Raptors come playoff time. You you. you there, you don't need to have more arguments besides three-point shooting, really. And I don't think that the defensive argument is an incredibly strong one because I don't see that the Raptors are ever losing games against guards specifically coming up in the clutch. There's just not that many guards that are closers. The closers in this league are small forwards. That's just the way it typically is, shooting guards or small forwards. It's not it's not the guards that are you know really closing out games in the NBA. Yeah, well, it's still not a bad thing to improve the defense if you're capable. If you, you know, you can replace a really good defender in Fred Van Vliet by with a guy that's the best, the best in the league currently. I'm talking right now because I'm still on the fence if I'd like to make this move because Fred is a few years younger. We're not really sure with the money contract situation. Fred's been less injured over his career, so I'll, I'll make my final point. But the the right now argument too. One of the biggest issues with Fred Van Vliet and why he was shooting so inefficient, especially in that Celtic series, especially in the Sixer series the year before, is he can't get any easy bucket striker. He can't get any in the lane and really convert over taller defenders. And we look at the the rest of the Eastern Conference right now. Doc Rivers is picking up the mantle in Philadelphia. They're going to try and make some moves. Uh, Daryl Morey's there, so I assume their roster is going to get a lot better, a lot more modern. So they have a lot of big men that. Fred Van Vliet looked un, literally unplayable last year in the playoffs, right? Against the Celtics, he did knock down some shots. He was super clutch in some games, but he's he's back and forth. If the three's not going in in certain series, Fred Van Vliet just really struggles. And, you know, I think Drew Holiday has ability to finish in the lane, right? Finish over people, have that quicker first step, be a bit bigger in terms of just scoring at the net, right? That, that will be... Like, I think Fred Van Vliet will give you higher highs, right? The three-point shooter, the the hot shooting streaks will be able to give you those moments that are just magical. And we needed some of them in the playoff series, as you said, with the Bucks and the Warriors. But a guy, you know, you're paying big money to. And Drew Holiday, Fred Van Vliet, they're going to get big contracts. And just in our last podcast, striker, you said... You don't want any players where it's risky in certain series. You don't want to play them or not. These guys are getting 20, 25 plus million dollar deals. And Fred Van Vliet is arguably unplayable in certain series, or at least he has been in the past. I think he's going to be able to improve specifically his finishing, especially with the little break we have now. But, you know, Drew Holiday is a guy that's not going to have that issue. He's not, you know, you're saying like he's a bad three point shooter. He only shoots four le- four less percent in a game in a less efficient offense and a guy where he's taking a lot of dribble pulls and tougher shots than maybe a Fred Van Vliet gets kicked out to and stuff. I I don't know. I think right now, I think short term, it's Drew Holiday. Long term, it's Fred Van Vliet. It depends on what the Raptors plan to do. Drew Holiday is also a bigger name to attract free agents. So that's another factor you have to take into account. I've... I've been, I know I've been arguing so in this podcast more so for Drew Holiday because because I, I think there is certainly an argument to be made, but like you can't just just write him off and say Fred Van Vliet's surely better. Well, and you know it is more fun to have two polar takes because <laughs> I I think as well I'm I, I can't you're you're right I can't say that Drew Holiday is this bum and he has no you know he's not going to provide anything to the team. You're you're right in that guard finishing in the paint 
with from the guard position is a thing that the Raptors just have not been able to do. Norman Powell is he tries. And, and Lowry does it when he drives, but Lowry went through a, like two years where he just didn't drive to the net. <laughs> Yeah, but even this season, I think he was shooting, what, seven threes per game? It was very high. So a lot, the majority of his shots were coming from the perimeter, right? It, was, it wasn't It was until the yeah. playoffs and a couple of series where he really started to make an effort to attack, you know? And mm-hmm. more yeah. often than not, um, he had success, but that wasn't his game. And we didn't really see it in the moments where it mattered, especially in that Boston series where they didn't have extraordinary height or anything. Like, it wasn't like the, the Boston should have been this intimidating inside defending team but that's how it played out and I think that you're right in your points that Drew Holiday would be an improvement and that he really has such a limited sample size in the playoffs that he the season that he shot 25 percent he only played three playoff games so I I think it was three Mm -hmm. playoff games so it must have been an injury or something like that too but um yeah I don't know I, I I don't know my rational my rational brain would would agree with you that there's pros and cons for both. I just don't see a sign and uh, a sign and trade with Fred. I think that his market value is higher than that. I think that you should be able to flip Fred into a an Oladipo, or you should be able to flip Fred into a, ba- a Bradley Beal. Like, I, I I'm just very high on Fred's trade value if sign and trade is what you're looking to do with him. Would you rather have Depot or, or Holiday? Yeah, I knew you were going to ask that. And as soon as I mentioned Oladipo, I almost regretted it. I would, I, <laughs> to be honest, I, I maybe I would almost rather have Drew Holiday, and maybe that's a super yeah. hot take. Yeah, like like prime Depot, 2018 Depot. I'm taking Depot just because of his scoring ability, and you know he does all the Holiday things with a greater height and a better three point shooting percentage, but. Two years of injured Depot, I don't really know if that's the case. Bradley Beal, that guy seems like he's untouchable. I feel like the Wizards won't trade him if, you know, the Raptors offered 20 first-round picks, Siakam, and OG. But who who knows what is actually going to happen with Bradley Beal. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting discussion. I, I'm interested to see what the comments section is because I could see it going either way. So definitely let us know down below. I'm sure you have already if you'd rather if you'd like to see a potential Fred for Drew Holiday sign and trade. Obviously, this is all hypothetical right now. And, you know, we're just seeing what what's out there because there's been no surefire rumors. And that usually means stuff's a brewing. When there's a lot of rumors, usually nothing happens. But when, when things are quiet... And there's little things leaking here and there. There's usually some big stuff that's going to happen, and especially with the league, the cap, and all that. It's I, I expect a lot of big things now the next few weeks across the NBA. Maybe not necessarily the Raptors, but you guys are the best for making this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Riker, any last words on Drew Holiday? Ben, Drew Holiday, the NBA season is starting around Christmas. You know, there's a conspiracy theory here, Ben that it could come together (laughs) need the air horns I don't have the app with me that's tough enough of that (laughs) cheers